Okay, I think it's recording. <sighs> Hi. Um, my name is Vincent Gao. This is my confession and my truth about everything that so that surrounds um how I started social media. So yeah, let's start with confession. Yeah, so my TikToks are obviously staged. Many people obviously don't like stage videos, but there are reasons behind why I stage my videos. I've never really had any talent growing up. I can't sing. I mean, I try to go to like class, took classes for guitar, singing classes. I never really went through with it because I had no passion. I can't dance on TikTok. You see like all these big um, TikTokers like Charlie D'Amelio, Bryce Hall. They all dance. They're also obviously very different than me in terms of uh, cultural background, how they were raised, and what type of family they were born in. Well, as you can see guys, I wasn't born in a very like well-off family, but we were still kind of comfortable. We just live in a townhouse that's two floors in New York. My parents came to the U.S. when they were probably like 17. Well, my mom came in at 17. My dad came in around like 19. They were just, they, they were not well off in China. At that time it was very, uh, China back then was still like rebuilding back then. It was in the 1900s, 19, probably 1990s. They didn't come in with a lot of money. My dad came into the U.S on a boat, like a ship. I don't know how he got in, but um, it, it was quite a lot of like, different like jumping here and there. I'm glad today that he got his uh, passport, which is pretty good. And my mom was, uh, she, she first went into Vietnam first from China, was there for like a month. She, she could have got kidnapped, but like one person was really like cool, cool enough to, um, you know, release her and then send her to US, which is pretty, pretty cool. Well, nowadays we can't really like relate back then, but uh, so so yeah. Um, that that's just a little bit about my my parents' background. But yeah, they they came into the US. They they were living in Chinatown, uh, and then I was born. They, they were in like 26, 25. They had me. Yeah, they they were living in a Chinatown, really tiny tiny bedroom. Like, things were going so bad for them. Um, like, like the correct word for that to use is very, like, very poor, but not like poor where they had to sleep on the street. But it was an apartment with a couple bedroom with so many other people. It was like community housing in an apart apartment. Uh, I was sleeping on one bed with both of them. Uh, it was just us three in one tiny bedroom. They sent me to China and then for like the next six years. I came back when I was six. So in order, this was the way for them to make money, um, save up for the next five, six years. My sister came to China too. She was, she's like two years younger. Um, yeah, it, it was very hard to afford raising children back then. I'm not saying in my experience, I don't have, I don't have kids yet. So I'm still very young. Yeah, uh, so after all that being said, we don't have that much money growing up. The ideal mentality for uh, for kids our age from immigrant parents was, was uh, to, like for, for Asian people, for Chinese, specifically I'm Chinese, was to go to college, take courses obviously, and then find a good job. Maybe at a manager at a restaurant, um, maybe become a lawyer, engineer, doctor. <laughs> yeah, fortunately my parents didn't really like, they, they just wanted me to, to succeed, to, to graduate college, which I did not graduate college, I dropped out actually. Yeah, I dropped out of college. I started college very early. I was like 16 years old. That's because I came into the US later than, I was six years old and then, uh, they put me in a higher grade than usual, so I was like 
it was like third grade in North Carolina. I started so early. They thought, because I said I was like seven. In China, your age is plus one. Because when you're born, you're basically one years old, not zero. So I was like a, a grade ahead. And then in high school, I took like AP courses and then dual enrollment while I was in like college because I was I, I was in New York. There's, there's not like beaches. Oh my God, talking about that is so crazy. Um, yeah, I see like other kids just growing up, like just having fun uh, at beaches, at lakes. Um, they had like boat houses and shit like that. We didn't grow up to too much luxury. Luxury. Um, wait, what was that? Um, shit. Oh, damn. Yeah, we didn't grow up too much luxury. Um, I just. The only thing I had was just taking two buses in the morning to school. It was like an hour and a half every fucking day for high school. That wasn't the brightest in school too. So I ended up in a not very good high school. You know guys, I never like... Sorry guys. Okay, where was that? Um, no, but... I'm not saying that, like, I'm not ungrateful about my past. Like, it made me who I am today. It made me who I am today. I really, like, appreciate it. I love everything about my life now. Obviously, I still, like, just, like, some part of it. I'm still working on it. But I'm improving almost every day. This is, like, this quote that I live by the most. 1% day improvement is 365%. A improvement a year that's like almost three to four times growth yeah uh, so I'm gonna just scratch on high school part everything else so obviously I didn't have much money back to TikTok shit everything was staged on TikTok the reason why I didn't have any talent uh, the only thing I could do was basically shoot TikTok videos that I'll go out and talk to people, get to meet them. It's super cool meeting them actually. I, I got to meet like thousands, tens of thousands of people every day. So many rejections. Uh, people say no to being in my videos. Okay, so stage videos, they generate. They generate enough money. So they generate enough money so you can buy the equipment that you need to launch off to do what you want to do later on. Stage video is not something I want to do, but it's something that I had to do back then in order to survive. Um, nobody really supported me on my social media journey. I, I was working in uh, Pennsylvania in a restaurant. It was it was seven dollars an hour, like during the summers, and then during school college years, I was actually working at this school's IT office. Um, fortunately, it was like. It was fifteen dollars an hour, but I had to wake up every morning. I like had to arrive at office at seven, and then also like do my schoolwork on time. Um, just kind of juggling between. I was I was just saving up money. Uh, I thought that life was gonna be mine. Like I was just gonna like go as how it is, and then go to school, find a job, or maybe put money into my four hundred one k stuff like that do everything that um, normal people are supposed to do apparently um, I'm, I'm not saying anything about like hate like saying apparently I'm just saying that this is what society the, the normal society is doing I'm just like I'm just too like I I'm weird I'm on the strange side I just happen to like wander off into like some different path that nobody really took wants to take or would take because it's just honestly it's just dumb like I wouldn't recommend anyone doing that because it's a lot of risk yeah so I had a girlfriend for a year and a half a year and a half in college too while I was working and in a class so I was like I had a lot of like AP classes so I was about to graduate early but apparently I failed my last, I felt my last semester in college. 
reason was my ex broke up with me because I guess I just wasn't mature enough. Um, thank you. Oh my gosh. Yeah, I, I was like so sad for like two months. I couldn't eat for like many weeks. Like, I just ate a little bit. I slipped down like 15 pounds in, in like a month. Like, it was like crazy fast. I had a whole graph. Like, I, was, I think I was tracking myself because I was like, shit, it's like you gotta get your life together. I was just like, I was trying my best, but I couldn't. I just kept thinking about my ex back then. <sighs> okay, I'm, I'm sitting in the parking lot, so I hope nobody sees me cry. <laughs> Okay, I really want to get this story out because if I'm like 60, 60 years old, I'm not gonna be able to like remember any of this shit. So I just want to put this out. I don't care who sees it. Um, I hope my kids sees it, like my future kids, in like 20, 30 years when they grow up. So they will, they will know what it was like. Um, yeah. So my ex broke up with me. I was like so sad. Then uh. I failed my classes and my office job I was like doing so badly in. I was just like skipping work because I was just staying up and crying shit. Yeah guys sorry sorry I don't want you guys to come in here just to see me cry. If you wanna leave, please leave. Um, I'm not asking you to stay. But I'm just putting this out there so those who want to listen can listen. Um honestly I don't mind. So thank you to all those that are listening still and are still here. I just want to appreciate you so much. I don't know you, but I just want to say thank you so much. Yeah, uh, so I had the savings in my bank, like my, my stock account actually. Because back then in college, everyone taught me to put your savings in your stock or your savings account. I just decided to do the stock market because I take a little bit of risk. <laughs> this guy messaged me. He had like 400K on TikTok. He was like doing dances and like musically type of stuff back then i don't remember probably it was like 2020 what year was that i don't i don't honestly i don't know it was like during the summer or spring anyways that doesn't even fucking matter at all uh what matter was how i got started in social media so he messaged me 400k dude not naming any names i flew down to florida miami i made a couple instagram videos back then actually um it was like before college I was like just shooting here and there because I really always want to do social media because Logan Paul and Jake Paul has always been like I've been like a huge fan of them growing up it was like they just came from Ohio and then just settled down in LA and then find a way to like the way they are right now making millions a year now just just crazy I just admire these dudes like Danny Duncan <laughs> he kept at it for like six seven eight plus like seven plus years I don't know like Mr. Beast did it for like 10 plus years. I don't know. He since he was like a little kid. Everyone just super crazy. I, I look up to them so much. Ross Creation, Niga Higa. Um, these are like the OGs. Wasabi, Lauren. I, I don't know. Lauren DIY. <laughs> it's crazy. I was like nine, eight years old just watching them. Yeah. So I flew down to Miami. I stayed with that dude. I just learned. I was like helping him film. It was equivalent to like just working for someone for free who had the experience. I just learned how he does stuff, like his daily routine. Like he, he wasn't very well off, just like like probably a little bit worse than me to be honest. So I like really, I still have big respect for him, except I don't talk to him anymore because some some stuff happened along the way. Just people's opinion, like the value changes over time. We had different values. <sighs> but huge respect for that dude still. Yeah, I, I learned about his stuff and then I, I slowly got like acquainted with how the TikTok world works, how the culture works, how to connect with people, how to like meet TikTokers, talk to TikTokers. Like influencer world is different than the normal world. Um, we're all living in a different reality. I, I basically study everything just see how it, um, this dude in Miami just interacts. I, I, learned, I learned stuff around, blah, blah, blah. So for like s five, six months straight, I was just, I shot like, no, actually four months straight, I shot 250 videos. I counted it um, on four different accounts, TikTok accounts. 
I never blew up. I, I it was always at under a thousand followers, five thousand followers. I was like, um, the guy in my army had like a million, but women like next four months because um i was helping with film just learning stuff and i was uh basically they say teamwork makes the dream work so i was like exchanging ideas back and forth <laughs> but i wasn't able to blow up so i was like so confused but he, he was able to grow up so like i was like so like i've always been like a huge like a supporter of people around me to blow up so i've always like was very happy for him i either way um yeah, for four accounts that I had, no, no, nothing blew up. <laughs> Took so long. And in the fifth account, I just decided to change my strategy. It was a staged prank. It was just making a fool of myself. Literally embarrassing me and my the guy in my, in my we were just embarrassing each other in our own videos. We we're just making similar content. <laughs> I was like breaking down this video, I was like, okay, this video has to be exactly 0 0.3 seconds, 0 0.2 seconds, 0 0.9 seconds. It was like milliseconds. I was like, this is the cut, 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 cut. It was almost like fine, but obviously it was like 15 seconds. Cause TikTok back then was the ideal, 11 to 15 seconds. <laughs> yeah, I was, I was bringing stuff down and then my video blew up overnight and his was like blowing up too. So we started like cranking those type of like prank videos out where we buy like maybe a snicker bar and gum together, we tapped him together with my mouth like wide open. We were looking like clowns back then. To be honest, we're probably better off working at McDonald's back then <laughs> based on our videos. But we were hitting like millions. Video views were hitting three to 10 millions. My follower rate shot up to like, uh, I guess 200K within a couple months. And then he, he was able to grow like to like 2 million. Uh, but I, I, was, I was like, Obviously, my growth rate was slower because I had lower following, although I had more views. People would not follow me because it was like a bandwagon effect. The more followers you have, the more likely they will follow you. And then we, we travel around the world. We didn't have the money back then too. We still don't, but it's a bit better off now. <laughs> yeah, TikTok Creator Fund did not exist back then, but we were just making like, we were just trying to get the views up so we could get brand deals and then music videos. I mean, as a music, like, you know, back then, like 2019, 2000, no, 2020, people, like artists, like new artists would pay TikTokers, like small TikTokers, like maybe $100, $200 to promote in their video. <laughs> to be honest, like when I went to Miami, I only had like, I was like, I had a saving for my stock market. I was like, saved up $5,000, I flew down. Um, I was like, the money was only used on the stuff I needed to use for the video, like the snacks I used to prank each other. Yeah, and then the food that I had to eat. It was like, I was eating at Wawa's. The sandwich there was like $4. Sometimes I just ate ramen. And then I was I was fortunate enough that his family, it was a, it was an African family, so from, from the, one of the islands. So it was like, I was like eating beans and fried chicken and then brown rice and stuff like that. Um, yeah, super, super chill. I still, I still fucking love them to death. Um, I just don't talk to them anymore because time moves on. I'll probably say hi to them in like a couple years. I don't know. <sighs> Either way, yeah, I was, I was using all my money in the stock saving to like work with that dude. Uh, we went to LA once, actually, like, like eight months later. I don't know the timeline. It's just, it's just here, there, there. It's been so long. I don't remember. But all I know is, like, this, this was what happened, and this was what happened. We went to LA, and then shit happened, and then after that time, we just never really talked. And then I came down to Georgia with my dad. We staying in Atlanta. I was staying at his house. Um, I met this dude there. And then I just thought of this, like I, I was sleepy. And then for some reason, I just like decided to do like a chair pull prank on him the next day. Cause I was like, I need to get a TikTok video out. I haven't shot a TikTok video for like two months because, well, I did, but I just didn't know what to shoot. I just didn't know like what to do because it was like after LA and all those, all, all those stuff like just friends leaving each other I was like alone uh, I was in Georgia <laughs> and I just decided to shoot this chair pull prank I was like took so many shots and I was like wait I'm wearing a sweater I could maybe ask something I ran around the corner I was like I have a t-shirt underneath I could just like camouflage myself and blow up but I just added keep adding and then my, that, that dude and I were just exchanging ideas and then it became the sweater change prank. I pulled his chair, run around the corner, 
take my sweater off and that was the start of my TikTok career and TikTok Creator Fund just released it um, I, I was in the late game they didn't really add me in until later on I was like running out of money I was almost at literally zero like a couple of bucks left in my bank account and then TikTok Creator Fund came out so I was fortunate enough I know I needed the money um, I couldn't shoot YouTube videos which I really really wanted to for so many years because nobody would film for me for free everyone just leaves the next like I tell them shoot they'll be like oh no I'm busy I'm sorry um, nobody's gonna be there for you unless you unless they share the same dream with you or unless you kind of just pay them <laughs> I, I wish there was a way to for me figure out if anyone has a suggestion let me know <laughs> Yeah, I just didn't have any, like, much friends growing up because I couldn't really relate. My culture was just, nobody could relate to my culture. Except maybe my um, Asian ethnicity fellas, fellows, friends that are watching this video. You could probably relate a little bit, but I hope you understand. Um, it's just, I don't know. I hope you do. I hope you do. But either way, um, yeah, I was, like, just staging this switching sweater prank changing sweater prank video each million views got me like thirty dollars on tiktok i just had to save enough it was like i need i needed the money so i was like just put it, pushing the video out so freaking much i was just shooting like three to five videos a day probably even like six seven some of them didn't go viral the ones that did they're like a million to like maybe 10 million 10 million dollars no 10 million views equals to just three hundred dollars well, as you can see, I didn't have too much experience back then, so many people were exploiting my videos. And they were like on Facebook, Instagram reposting, and also making money of it. But I didn't know back then, I just I just let it slide, I didn't know. And then, uh, this this guy in Florida, I don't know who messaged each other, but I, I do, I love that guy. Like, he, he was like making YouTube videos, like just stupid, funny, little YouTube videos that, it didn't make sense at all, but I just saw his name. This, this guy's name is Marshall, but uh, he had this surfer way, uh, surfer boy hair. And then he had like a good personality on, on the vlog, just talking about his morals a little bit. I was like, holy shit. And then I was like, this guy got potential. He's like sh actually trying to shoot videos. He's like, the way we were exchanging conversation. And then I just like understood his value and morals, like what he wanted to do. I just love everything, the details about what he said. So I was like, I don't know who said to go down, but probably me or him, he told me, I, I don't know. It's all in the Instagram DMs. I'm not going to open it anymore because that's the past is the past. So yeah, I flew down. I stayed at his place. Yeah, and then uh, he, I, I taught him everything he needed to know. Well, that time I was like having trust issues because my, my other friend was just, it was like more like left me out of nowhere. So I was like, oh shit, I can't trust so many people because influencers are probably fake or snakes or the green, whatever like state you're from, green, snake, fake. But um, Marshall told me in order for us to grow faster, it's important to like, like, like share information because this way he could catch up to where my level was at so we could like uh, help each other grow faster. And this was this was actually my mentality before I met that dude. I was with the other dude in Miami. I, I wanted to. I did it. I, I said the exact same thing to that dude, but he didn't listen. I was like, "You gotta. Sh you you have to let me know a lot of stuff." He, well, he didn't tell me a lot of stuff. It's just it took so many months of detour compared to the um, Marshall because I was able to tell him everything. Instead of taking half a year to like grow faster, it actually took less than a month. Like it took a matter of a week to like just blow up like super fast. Um, it just, it took a lot of trust to like, you know, sometimes you just gotta trust some, somebody. Um, either way, um, I wouldn't be able to have this camera if I wasn't able to save up enough from TikTok. Um, TikTok alone, I was able to generate like over like 10 grand uh over time so i was able to um but my laptop was already broken my camera was like broken as fuck uh, i was just shooting on my phone i was just shooting on my phone uh, my other phone was it was the iphone like x it was like it was like burning up every day in the florida hot sun 
the battery was like it was it was so hot. I thought it was gonna explode or something. Um, so so either way, um, yeah, my, my phone was broken. Blah blah blah. I saved like ten thousand plus from the TikTok video. I spent two thousand on like on a new camera. Like over time, I bought like a new phone. It was like a thousand dollars. My laptop was like broken as fuck. I couldn't edit YouTube videos actually. I was trying to hop into YouTube because I had enough money by then. Um, laptop was like not two thousand, a thousand like four hundred, five hundred. Um, I bought a new GoPro camera too um, recently, which is uh, and all the equipment was like seven hundred something dollars. Uh, yeah, and the remaining food, like remaining um, money, I, I use it to like, pay my filmer, pay my YouTube editor, like new ones. Over, I, I was hiring people over time. I went through so many editors so many filmers it was crazy like there's another thing about like management shit about social media shit that i'm gonna probably dive into like probably later on in my years i'm not gonna talk about it now because of legal issues i was like it was, it was crazy shit scary shit I, I hope nobody goes through the shit i went to i went through i'm glad I'm, I'm like solving everything right now yeah stage videos equals fast money it, like it wasn't fast money, but it was enough for me based off my t like I had no talent I had no fucking talent. I'm not saying that I don't believe I don't have any talent Maybe if you work hard for it, you could have it. I just it was just that time. I was like I dropped out of college and everything I just didn't have anything In My account I needed I needed the money I always want to shoot YouTube video and TikTok was like my golden ticket out of the I guess you could say out of the hood, but it's not really out of the hood because it's not the hood, it's just the trenches. Not the trenches, but um, the underground world. The underground world. So it was um, it was my way of getting out of the under underground world. But um, I still respect everybody that's just trying to make it out of the trenches, everything. I'm still trying to make it out too. I, I still live in my parents' house. Same old house for the past like 14 years, 13 years. I don't know, I don't, I don't really know. But I really want to move my parents out of the house, buy the new cars and stuff like that. And everything that's like, I don't know, it's just, I've always grew up wanting to like be like wealthy and then just buying my friends and family like stuff they need because I hate seeing people work hard. But for my YouTube video, I promise you guys, I, I was able to save up enough money for the next couple of months, next couple of months. So I have enough to pay my editor, my filmer. I have the equipments that I need now. It's a, it's just iPhone 12. But it's, I didn't get a 13 because I didn't necessarily need the latest model. I didn't, I didn't get the latest model for everything, but it was just good enough to keep me going for the next year. So I could pay all my filmer, my editor, my editor, travel costs and food. So I could shoot YouTube videos only. Um, Basically, I'm giving up on stage TikTok videos. I'm giving up on that source of income. Um, everything's gonna be real from now on. YouTube has always been real. You start from all the way back then when I started on YouTube. Like, look at all of those videos. I will never stage a single YouTube video. Everything's everything's genuine reaction. Like, I, I, like literally when I shoot YouTube videos, I will go out. I, I plan like a specific day just for YouTube videos. Unlike TikTok, where I plan a specific day for TikTok, where I shoot like seven, eight videos for like the next eight hours. And then YouTube video, I spend like eight to 10 hours just waiting outside, just waiting for the right reaction. I will, I will get like 60 reactions and only put like the best one in there, like five, six, like best reaction inside my YouTube videos. Um, obviously they're not the best, but I'm still trying. It's just, it's a lot of work because unlike TikTok, where it's staged, you gotta talk to people, you get exactly what you need. Um, so you get the viral video that you need. It's a higher chance of going viral versus just making YouTube videos where the chance of you getting a hit video was so low. It was like my mentality the whole time was basically, get all my videos viral. It was like only viral videos, like it was all about the views, like the views had to go high. But like deep down in my mind, it was I gotta make this money so I could actually shoot YouTube videos because I've always loved vlogging. I've, I've loved. I've always wanted to show my 
my other side of the life, um, stuff like that. And and YouTube is where I've I've always wanted to be on. I want to like shoot movies in the future, but uh, yeah, that's like for later on stuff like that. I think I talk for more than necessary than what's necessary. So I just I just want to thank you guys for being here for like 40 plus minutes. I don't know like 40. I don't know how long. Like for over half an hour. I didn't waste your time. And for those who are new, who are taking risk, um, why why I don't recommend you to do like big take big risk like why I did, like potentially just like fucking up in social media, wasting all your money, and not blowing up, and not making any money at all. Like obviously take calculated risk. You know what I mean, guys? Like I, I think calculated risk is the best way to go, because at the end, at the end of the day, it's either go big or go home. Like for us dudes out there, we're not like, we're not like other. I, I feel like this is very political to say. It's just we're not, we're not like females. We're, we're, we're like whole, whole ass like dudes. Like nobody will give a fuck about us once you're like adult, you're like eighteen plus. Nobody's gonna give a fuck about who you are. <laughs> like some of you guys who are like kicked out of your family after like eighteen. I've I've seen in California like people. Kids were just like, like parents just dumped their kids like in the street, let them live in their friends after 18, they gotta move out. I'm sorry guys, you gotta move out. My house at 18, stuff like that. Yeah, for those dudes, it was go big, go home. It was like, either this is what you're gonna do for the rest of your life. It was, yeah, it was either you do this, it's either you work for other people for the rest of your life, or you take risks and do what you love for the rest of your life. Then you're gonna end up working for the other people for the rest of your life. Uh, I gave up on partying, um, a lot of stuff, like for the past like couple of, couple of months, but just to focus on a lot of stuff. There's like big things coming. Um, I'm working on a lot of stuff like overnight. I just sleep for like five hours now, five six. I still get a good enough sleep, like five, maybe seven sometimes. <laughs> Depends. Obviously, like so, this one more thing I really want to address for for those people. We're on our bed. We're, we're like eating sometimes, like eating food, and we'll watch social media how other people are so fucking happy. You see all those big influencers just having a dream come true. Like I, I go on social media sometimes, I just look myself down. They're making like seven figure income, even six plus figure. And I was like, holy, holy fuck. Like my life is like whack. It makes, it makes me sad, but at the end of the day, guys, you're competing with yourself. Don't compete with other people. You don't have enough mental real estate. You don't have enough time inside your brain to be thinking about other people's success. Just keep focusing on yourself. Like I am gonna keep focusing on myself. I, I also, I want the best for everyone that's gonna be around me. So those people that sticks by me, I've always like been like a huge supporter of those people who sticks by. I, I will always want them to succeed. Even if they leave, I don't care. I will always want them to succeed because they take the risk. They took the risk to be in social media game. And for those of you who are gonna take risk and doing other stuff, maybe you're going to like investment banking. I, I don't know, like you're starting a business or maybe bowling, like fishing business. I, I don't know, like maybe like fixing cars, fixing airplanes, or even going to college. Just remember that. If you're passionate in something, you're gonna work really hard in it. And I really like suggest you guys to do do that. Focus on your passion. But if you don't have money, do something you don't like first to gain that money and then do what you need to do when you have enough. But obviously take calculated risk. So uh, with that all that being said, um just don't focus on other people's life. Just focus on yourself guys. Be selfish, but Please don't be greedy, guys. Like, there's many money to be sh shared around the world. Like, but time is very important. Time's very important. And no matter how much time I have, while I would give it out to people, but if they're, if it's like too much time, obviously you gotta be selfish with that. And then as for money, like once you have so much money, my goal has always been to like, well, I wanna give back to the, to the community and, and everybody. So thank you very much for watching.